need more gold. Yes. We need more gold. Tower Islands will never work on live stream for a very, very obvious reason. Yes, unfortunately, he is. Are you hero and obey? Ha! Huh? We're under attack. Sub sub. Something is doing. What task is there? Fight. Excellent choice. Fight. Excellent choice. Yes. Work complete. Yes, Lord. I am yours. I need you on, Master. I thought he would do that. I thought if I just look away for a split second I'm going to get surrounded. And I was right. I only needed a moment to do it. And that was all it took. And I got surrounded. That's gay. But that's what it is. Them's the breaks. I guess I've probably lost already now by that. Just missed out again. I am yours. Excellent choice. Can I help you? What do you want? Yes, Lord. Taste of my blade. Are you hero and obey? What class is there? I am yours. Stop. 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 Work godly. What class is there? We're under attack. What do you want? This is all wrong, by the way. All of this. I am yours. Something is doing. Yes, Lord. What task is there? What do you want? Oh, Tom. What task is there? I am yours. Yes, Lord. I am yours. My life for the Lord. Upgrade, complete. Master. What task is there? I am yours. What, what task you is there? Oh. Master. I am yours. Yes. Sub sub. Small move. Oh. Huh? Yes, Lord. Here we go. 
This is building those towers basically as early as I can build them. Didn't see that one coming. Yep, that's the brakes. That's the brakes. That's how you go. I don't know how I can put those up any earlier. Unless I build the war mill, like, before I even build grunts. Those towers still don't go up even before the, the tier 2 push hits. You can see that. And that was, those towers went up basically the moment I could put them up. That's just... I don't know. I don't know. Orc, basically, there's like a 10% win to chan uh, chance to win versus human as Orc. I've been watching Fly's replays, who's a famous Orc player, and 9 times out of 10, he gets tier 2 rushed by human or night elf or undead or whatever, even undead fucking cigarette rush Orc. Whatever it is that deals with Orc, they get rushed every fucking in time. They get focused, their buildings. It's virtually impossible to not get fucked by Orc when you play Orc. They are designed to be fucked. Because Burrows are so awful. Death surrounds you. Are you online right now? Because if you are, then I will let you play first as Albert and play as Orc. Yeah, undead typically rush orc with cigarettes. I'm not even joking. That's actually a standard thing to do as a pro player on the top level, is to still do that. Is orc get rushed every which way. Because they're so shit when it comes to tier 2. Bloodlust is awful in 1 versus 1. You'll never see bloodlust ever in one versus one. So are you online now? Death surrounds you? Where are you? I assume you have a Warcraft free uh, account. Let's get you online. See how easy it is. Because all I know is Albert is shit, and he's able to beat me. So, that human shit is super easy mode. Go Archmage, go Beastmaster, run to the enemy base, press W and Q for Quill Beasts and Water Elementals, and then tell them to attack Burrows. Automatic win. I'm waiting for Death Surround you to come online, so I'll be back in a moment, and he should be back online at the moment. Is he online yet? Where is he? Is that you? He's gone very quiet in the chat room. I haven't seen him type anything since. I don't believe that Deathbringer, to be honest, but... We'll put you into the game anyway. Let's 
The stream is for like another hour or so. That last game wasn't a good game anyway. I basically lost that anyway. The moment I lost that grunt was the moment I lost the game. It didn't go well. Because it was like, well, I can't really afford to lose a grunt because I know I'm going to get rushed. And the Blade Master couldn't do much. He'd done the top left bit, but then he was kind of like, what does he do now? To go to the bottom right bit? By that point, he's going to be rushing anyway. It's a bit nasty. I think I need to use the grunts to help me creep that. Don't know how he's able to till, still talk. Hello, everyone in the chat room, by the way. I'm a bit better at um, dealing with my losses these days. I've learnt to be because of people complaining about me complaining, which is irony itself, but. Yeah, I'm a bit tired of um, the whole tier 2 power push, but I think that's like like people said before, Albert's a one-trick pony. He can't do anything other than that. If he can't go Archmage, he's fucked, basically. If he can't go a summoning hero, he's fucked. So the deal is, is that if I'm going to play versus Albert, I'm going to have to learn to deal with that, because that's all he's ever going to do. Ever. He will never do anything else. But the problem is, is the pros... And I mean, these people are like a million times better than me. Struggle versus tier 2 pushes. In fact, many times in these Flies replays, he basically loses almost all of his games. I've been watching like loads. He's losing them all. He can't fucking win. So if he can't win, how the fuck can I win? Right, I'll do a bit of commentating. Streams off for the stream snipers. No, our fly wouldn't have trouble versus Albert, but what Albert's doing, this is my point. You don't have to be a good player to do what Albert's doing. That's why he is so effective at it. Because it basically requires virtually no micro. You basically go tier 2 and you get maximum units. So you've got the most possible units at that point in time when you're attacking. So not only do you outnumber your opponent, you're also extra outnumbering them. Because you've got two water elementals, two quilbits. If you were to put food stamps on those units, say for example water elementals are two food each. That's four food water elementals and two food on the quilbits. Eight extra food on top of all the other footmen and the two heroes that you have. The orc has one hero and about three to four grunts to deal with that. So it's about as strong as it could possibly be. Anyway, here we are, Deathbringer. I assume he's probably going fast here, but the problem is I kind of want to know how to deal with it when you go Blade Master, because Blade Master's stereotypically the orc's best hero for a lot of matchups, even versus humans, you kind of should do. But we'll see. Yeah, Albert needs to take his thing off. Kick Albert. I could ban Albert, but I don't know, that would uh, cut him off the stream. Oh good, we are seeing Blade Master. That's what I want to see. So he's got your scout going basically as the altar goes up, which is what you should do. I always get panicked about getting them um, trapped here when going by them. So this is the standard build order, 16 food. Next peon to come in, we'll build a burrow. So there you go. 
So this is this exactly the same how I do it, so this is pretty much what I need to see. Though we've got no guarantee that Death's going to win, but 200 gold, Grunt comes out. Then you're at the point where you might want to consider where your um, Foodoo Lounge is going to be built. So at this point in the game, Albert's hero isn't out, his first footman goes to scout. I do hope Albert isn't stream sniping, but I wouldn't put it past him to do so. Right, so we've got the hero coming out for the Blade Master. He hasn't gone for a shop yet. Is he going to put one down? Blade Master's out, Archmage goes to creep this, typically pulls them back. That way they still do damage. Blade Master's going straight off, Grunt to harass him. There is no shop yet, and I get the shop and I never ever use it, so it's hard to be able to get the shop. There we go, he is putting it down there. So the Archmage has crept where he's going to creep. It's going to be tough for the Blade Master. Ah, oh, I see Albert's already picked off his water elemental, so it can't be stolen. He heard the wind walk, I assume. Blade Master does about 70 damage, so there we go, he still manages to pick it off, get the experience, denies experience from the Archmage, which is one of the most important things to do, is to just slow down the Archmage's, uh, you know, progress. So the human's tier 2 right now, Orc is still behind, he can't tier 2 yet, he might have to sacrifice a Grunt if he wanted to do that, but even then he'd still be slightly behind the human when it comes to teching, no matter what. And that's doing the appropriate build order. There we go. He has sacrificed a grunt, like I said. Another grunt will come out when 200 gold is ready. Or he might go for a boost of speed, but that's still like 20 seconds away. It won't be yet. Looks like he's going to creep this bit. Berserkers do take a lot of damage from the Blade Master and the, the grunt, so it's not too bad. And this guy doesn't do that much damage. He's a big guy. Doesn't do that much. So he didn't go straight to the shop. Now he sells his Scroller Town Portal. I assume that uh, there is a grunt being produced right now. Two grunts onto the field. Looks like we're going to see boost of speed almost definitely get picked up in a moment. He will be able to finish this off because grunts can tank quite nicely. Not seeing boost of speed built yet because he's going for a third borough at this point. Archmage still level 1. Blade Master level 1 but will be 2 around the same time. Blade Master should just be able to finish this off. Oh my god that was so close. He probably was okay but he didn't want to take any chances. Picks up the boost of speed. That's unfortunate for him because obviously he doesn't want to use any wind walks whatsoever. Now the level 2 Archmage. Footmen do fine. 4 or 5 footmen. Tier 2 won't be too long. 6 footmen going for it. 5, 6, 7, 8 peasants for wood. 2, 4, 6, 7 peons on wood. So the Blade Master can come back and heal up. The Archmage is able to keep going though thanks to water elementals. They're just relentless. They do all the job for you. Where's the Blade Master? I have to get back. He can heal up. Grunts can do some tanking. Still experience the Blade Master, but the Archmage will get level 3 before he does. He won't get level 3 from this camp though. Expect to see tier 2 very shortly. More footmen coming out there, so that's 2, 4, 6, 7 footmen, and then an 8 footmen coming from the barracks. A lumber mill is now being produced just before tier 2. Archmage sitting with Circuit of Nobility, Gloves of Haste. Blade Master's got Gloves of Haste and Circle of Nobility, so the same items there, except obviously Booster Speed was purchased. Can't believe Albert moves around with that freaking uh, toggle formation. Anyway, Tier 2 has been reached for both players in a moment. Albert's doing some weird thing there, build, building an Arcane Vault. I guess he was going for some sort of extra push, because expect to see the Beastmaster picked up in a moment. Here come the 246 Militia, so he's going for a Tower Rush, because he's got 600 wood, so he's going all in here. He's not even doing the Spellbreaker's Caster's route, so this is something he wouldn't normally do. But it will still possibly be effective. Got four Grunts, Blade Master's able to pick off a Footman whilst he's speaking about. Shadow Hunter's being picked first before buildings. This means that he'll be able to come out extra fast and early. One Water Elemental, Quill Beast on the rope. Hopefully Grunts don't get surrounded, but it looks like one's going to get guaranteed surrounded. It's pretty hard because they're so slow and clunky. Militia coming through. Blade Master might be able to pick up another Footman here. At least that's something for the Grunt, but he's going to have to use a Wind Warp maybe to get out. No, he doesn't need to. He can just walk out another way. This is where the Burrows are in a bit of predicament because there's so many units so if I could pause the game right now you've got three grunts one blade master versus uh, five footmen at the moment and you know a couple of those footmen were taken off and then you've got all these peasants building I don't know if they should be building that close because the borough would be actually able to reach them but it looks like the borough is being a bit preoccupied at the moment with the footmen and we've got the blade master just moving around we've got the shadow hunter who's now spawned out is he going to be going for the uh, guard tower it looks like he's putting some focus on it, it looks like 
five peasants can basically reliably build it up despite the attack. Yep. Archmage is very close to level 3. If he just picks off this grunt, he'll be able to pick that off and then get himself to level 3. And in about, mm, I don't know, 10 seconds, he'll get another water elemental. It'll be a level 2 1. We've got two Quill Beasts. Archmage being in focus a little bit. Hex is helping. Blade Master might be in a position where he might be able to chase it down. At least the Archmage won't be able to hang around so comfortably. Got two Guard Towers almost going up here. If that Boris started focusing one of these Guard Towers, that would be able to pick it off because he wouldn't be repairing it. Peasants can still keep repairing. He's still got four or five footmen. Blade Master's in a lot of trouble now. He can't comfortably attack because every time he does he's getting focused so he has to keep backing off and he's the only source of DPS. Hex going off on the Archmage. Archmage being focused but still Archmage just boots the speed. Should reliably be able to run away. Unless, no, he won't be able to get another Hex in there. So we've got two Guard Towers about to go up. Still got two Water Elementals doing their thing and Archmage will be able to produce another Water Elemental relatively shortly. Looks like Orcs heroes are pulling back. There's no way to keep this burrow up now, so that's any more defense. It's now going down. Got Raiders coming out here. Deathbringer's now in a position where he's actually having to spend 150 gold, etc. on potions just to keep his Blade Master going. That bit longer, so that's more resources that the Orc has to do to spend on basically inefficient healing. And Beastmaster's just going to be pushed back, but there's no way he's going to get killed. The Archmage, though, came in. That was a little bit foolish, but Albert does finish off the Archmage, denying experience at the very least. Now, the Burrows are basically still going at the back at the very least, but there is another Guard Tower going up. It doesn't seem to be getting focused. If this Burrow goes onto that, obviously there's so much to worry about as an Orc, because this is such a high-pressured situation. But the Peasants are still going, and at the moment, look at Albert's base. He's still got 120 gold, 380 wood. He's still comfortable. He's able to build whenever he can. Doesn't look like he's going to lose that Guard Tower just before it goes up, but he might be able to get away with a Burrow kill here. And if he does, that's going to be huge, because that means that Death is going to be underneath the food cap. Won't be able to produce any more units, not that he's currently able to, because his gold is so screwed over because he's had to have peons sitting in the burrows all the time. So this is pretty horrible right now. Both of his heroes and his units are relatively low health. Beastmaster is going to go down here, but he does manage to pick off the uh, Shadow Hunter, so that was something at least. But the Guard Towers are here. Orc is still going. We don't see a uh, Demolisher right now, and if it does, it needs to go all the way up to the back, and it's going to take ages. And it does look like Death gives up the GG, because unfortunately you still can't fight versus those towers. So as you can see, outside, from an outside perspective, just how difficult it is to deal with that crap, basically. It is super overpowered. There's no denying it. So, good try, but... Unfortunately, it's just ridiculously hard. Ridiculously hard to fight versus. You're always behind, essentially. Always behind. Even if he loses the rush, he's still done damage by slowing down your tech. By having you force four peons into each burrow that do crappy damage. Very crappy damage, considering. You think four peons in a burrow should be able to do a bit more than that, but obviously it's nerfed to a point where it doesn't do much at all. So that's pretty harsh. Why do you think Albert lost their sexy time just looking at the uh, thing? Albert is better than all of you. How do you feel about that? your turn then is it? Shall we just keep throwing people at Albert? I'll give you a go but your stats might need to be a little bit more appropriate. <laughs> I'll just keep chucking orc players. People, it's like a, um, a gladiator arena or something like that. Just keep chucking people that play orc versus this imbalanced human that just goes tier 2 push. Maybe you should have done Secret Valley, that's what I lost on, but anyway, this will still do. And this is the thing, right? It's not like you're losing to a surprise attack. You know this is coming. But that's how strong this is, is even knowing this is coming, you don't have an option as Orc to build a counter to it until it's already happened, because your Tier 2 hits and then those buildings and units are already in your base. So it's not like, oh, get yourself some Spirit Walkers and Disenchant to get rid of those summons. You can't do that until about two minutes afterwards, and that's if you get the building. You'd have to get the building up, 
which will take time and that's a big if you get the building up and then you've got to train a spirit walker which is going to take 40 or so seconds then you've got to train adept training which is going to take probably about a minute so it's going to take three to four minutes you could go next demon master but again uh, Albert's bad but he's not that bad he's quite a capable player so unless you're like capable in one versus ones I think you're gonna struggle and this is overpowered as it is so you need to be like better than Albert as a standard and then be able to beat this strat but basically it's virtually impossible to have the counter to this strat ready because you don't you just can't as orc you can't do it unless you do something really weird which is get a hero that's probably gonna cost you the game you know uh, I don't know, say for example you've got yourself Beastmaster as well, or Pitlord to do Reign of Fire. Well that's all a good good and well, but if you win that battle, you might still have lost because he'll just revert back to casters and beat you that way. It's harsh. Please don't say shaman, people. Please don't say shaman. That if you say shaman, that basically just gives away that you unfortunately probably don't play any one versus one. I admire you for trying. For putting your um, efforts in and thinking that Shaman would be good. You'd think they would be. They're not. It doesn't work that way. I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll be quicker. Because they'd ha they'd come out with Purge out the gate. But one Purge wouldn't be enough to get rid of one Water Elemental. You'd need two Purges, I think. That's per Water Elemental. That's 100 mana. And as you can see, like I'm saying, you can't even get the Spirit Lodge by the time he's attacking, so... Here we go again. Let's just try to find these time. Orc versus Human. Disenchant is what you have to go, but Disenchant takes ages to get. The fact is, is you Orc have to beat this rush with three to four Grunts and a Blade Master as a standard. That's a typical Orc. That's what they have to do. Okay, they won't have anything else to help them other than Burrows. The Shadow Hunter might be able to come out in time, but otherwise, that's it. Later on, they'll get themselves Raiders and Spirit Walkers, and then that's how they'll have to win the game from the mid to late game point. But they have to survive with just the Blade Master and 3 to 4 Grunts, so it has to be done right. I'll be curious to see what the perfect build layout would be for it. That's why I did something weird in that game previously when I played versus Albert on Secret Valley. I started putting my buildings in weird places and I almost got the towers up. I was that close, but even then, that was building it pretty much as quickly as I could do because Albert was already in my base, so that helped to delay those towers. It's almost like he knew I put a war mill there, which is interesting. I wouldn't put it past him, like I say. Yeah, you've got to get the Blade Master up and level. You've got to slow down the Archmage, but at the same time you've still got to level up your Blade Master. So, there's the predicament right there. He's got a different build already, Albert here. He's getting a Scout Tower. I guess he's somewhat paranoid that he's going to be facing versus uh, Farsi. That's the only reason why I could assume that a Scout Tower is being built, so already he's differed slightly. This probably means that he's not going to be doing the Tower Rush that he did last game. What it means is much more likely he's just going to have that as a good deterrent. And on the side, he's going to be going towards Breakers, Priests, Sorks. Here comes the Footman with a Scout. Blade Master is out. Shop is going down. 19 food. Blade Master needs to get busy, like, right away. Cannot be hanging around whatsoever. Archmage doing what he does, free militia, nice easy creep of the Ogre Warrior. Water elementals are so damn good. Need to run Oh, is it Kajin? It's Kajin the Blade Master, and he's amazing <laughs> invisible bats. Unfortunately that grunt did get taken down there. So when you aggro these, it's in your interest to yeah, pull back a little bit. That's it. Pull the ogre back so that way the ogre, the grunt can do something. Gloves of haste for the blade master, Kajin. Gloves of haste for the Archmage. You can see the militia stepping back. We haven't seen the tower be produced into anything yet, which is probably the smart thing to do. 
it pains me to say it, but Albert does know what he's doing to some degree. He's not a complete noob, but what he does is so noobish, it's hard to think that he's not a noob, if that makes sense to you. Essentially, he's waiting to see if there's a fast here, but he would have scattered with the footman. He sees a blade master, so it's probably not in his interest right now to upgrade that until he feels it's needed, or he just wants to get it upgraded. But he knows he doesn't have to rush into it, because if he saw a fast here, it'd be like, right, okay, I better get this arcane tower up. Does that the uh, Fulu Lounge got a bit of a battering from the pen uh, the footman? Here comes the Archmage, another water elemental to tank. The water elemental behind doing some nice damage as well. Ogre Magi is easy. Unfortunate ensnares there. Footman going to town, still on the Fulu Lounge. Blade Master is looking for someone to pick off, and this is the right direction to go apparently. So we're looking at about night time. Albert's here, or he would be here with militia. So this is probably where you want to go. Don't get too distracted by the footman though. Because now's your opportunity to go for the uh, Archmage. Troll Trappers. Don't seem to ensnare anymore past the first one. I don't know what the cooldown is on it. No, yeah, it's obviously ready, but they just don't use it on the same units once they've done it before. Or it seems that way. Tech is on the same path, but of course Albert's tech is slightly further ahead. That's just the way it is. Human can manage to do it, despite Orc basically not spending any wood whatsoever. They're just always slower. So that means that Albert's got a bit more time to get his uh, Tavern Hero and reach the Orc base by the time he's teched. There's basically virtually nothing you can do. Now I've seen this pattern before, so I'd know what to do first as Albert now. Or to have a good likelihood. So this is what I would need to do. If I really, really wanted to get good, is I'd study replays to the point where I'd actually know almost definitely where the opponent's going to be. That's why if you're a really good player or something like that, you don't need map hack, because you'll, you'll know the timings and the most likely places that your opponent will be. Trust try to find me needs to go for the Berserkers first here, but the Ogre Mauler does drop the item. But the item that the Ogre Mauler drops is at utter crash crap. It'll be something like Sentry Wards or something. It's really bad. I don't know why he drops it. What is it? I can't see it. Replenishment Potion. That's like a level 1 item, basically. It's terrible. So we've got the Arcane Vault going up. That's going to allow the Archmage to get some more clarity for more um, water elementals. He's got himself Duff of Appearance, Ring of Protection plus 2. That's going to help a little bit more versus the Blade Master's attacks. Blade Master healing up with a Replenishment Potion, but he's got no mana to heal up. Thank you very much, Quid Puff. There's your stream delay. Okay, so we've got a tower, two towers going up, but this is way later than when I did it. And you can clearly see those towers. This is already over, basically. This is already over. Two, four, five footmen. Water elemental already stepping in. Level three archmage. He's going to have another water elemental. So there's going to be two water elementals to deal with, and five footmen doing like re resistant. Well, six footmen now, and the beast master coming in with the quills. Already one quill on its way. Another footman coming in. So it's even if you have like eight peons around that burrow, it's virtually impossible. Well, no, this is what you're going to see, Jacqueline. This is what all the top players do. You can't blame Albert too much for this, because after watching Fly's replays, like I've said, this is what humans do. This is basically what all of them do versus Orc, because it's so ridiculously strong. If you're not doing this versus Orc, you're doing it wrong, basically. It's just a sad fact, and it's unfortunate that this sort of thing is part of the meta, because Blizzard are never going to come back and patch this, so this is what it's going to be forever. Footmen are stuck. No, they're not completely stuck. In fact, they can walk out. Even then, all the uh, burrows are down. This is the thing. I wonder if you people watching this, when you watch me do that, you think, ah, this is easy. I could beat this. But you're seeing these are players that are stepping up to the mark and clearly struggling a lot more than even I do. So, uh, yeah, Albert's won by default. And on this side, he doesn't have the towers, but he has the double arcane sanctums pumping out sorks. Sorks are basically going to automatically win versus orcs. Because that's just what they do. They're really strong. You know how Bloodlust is a tier 3 ability, right? And it gives you speed and movement, right? Slow is a tier 1 ability when it comes to casters. So you get it off the bat. And it's basically the opposite of Bloodlust. So it slows the enemy. And it slows their movement and attack speed so it's basically bloodlust but in reverse except humans get it at tier 1 and orcs get theirs at tier 3 granted I'd much rather have bloodlust than slow because it's a buff to your own units but you've got to look at it in that sense this is slow the movement is slowed you can see it's just pretty much useless whenever whenever a unit gets slowed it's virtually useless 
particularly on the Blade Master as well. This is why Blade Master is kind of not great against human, but you still sometimes have to go Blade Master because he does so much damage. Without the Blade Master, Orc has like virtually no DPS. There we go, there's another healing potion, that's 150 gold being used just to keep the Blade Master going. Archmage might still be able to run away here, although he is pretty vulnerable. I don't think he's got himself uh, depth training yet on the Sorks, but I reckon he's probably training it, or he's thinking about training it. His macro slipped a little bit, he's up to 500 gold. Here we go, Blade Master's trying to hang back. He hasn't got a second hero. Might be able to pick off a Sork, but he's still having to get back. He can't win walk out of this one, in fact he could get picked off. But as long as Albert takes down the Foodoo Lounge, that's definitely it. Archmage's coming back in. Brilliance Aura, heals. Priests are going to heal 25 health per tick. So you've got to be doing more than 25 damage per tick to make yourself worthwhile, otherwise the priests are just going to heal that right up. And that's pretty much that. Do we have another challenger? I don't know, this will be uploaded to YouTube. I'm not uploading all my stream stuff to YouTube now. So that's part of the reason for the stream, I suppose, to some degree, is you'll get to see stuff that doesn't necessarily hit YouTube. Plus, I would be spamming YouTube at the rate I've been streaming now. So where's the Orcs? Orcs, unite. Demon, do you really want to give it a go? I bet you've got, like, minus stats. Yes, you fucking do. You're going to have no chance. I'm not being mean, you're just not going to have a chance. <laughs> Sounds mean, but you won't. Who's this fella? He knows Albert. He's much better. There we go. I don't mean that in a bad way, but I think 36 wins, 7. Drop hack tour, though. Does he hack? I don't know. He's from Clan Age, so there's a good chance of it. 4-0 solo, 20-0, 23 team. Obviously a bit of a smurf account until things go right for you. So you don't know truly how good he is until he's got a lot more wins. Does he play Orc though? Because the whole point of this is Orc. He doesn't play Orc. Can he play Orc though? Chucking these Orcs at Albert. Left, right and centre. Naga Sea Patch. Thank you, Hoden, for the OCD. Slow. So that's movement speed 25%. Yeah, attack speed is 60% slowed. So it's even more powerful then. Than Bloodlust, basically. That's why slow is so good. Because it's the same fucking. It's the same ability reversed. It's like Cripple, but tier 1. You get it for free. It's ridiculous. And you've got Brilliance Aura which means more slows than ever before. <laughs> What's the stock on neutral hero heroes? You can have as many neutral heroes as you like, up to three. You can only have up to three heroes, but you obviously can only have one of each type of hero. Mr. JB the French... No, that's not French, I read your name out because you said hi. That's Sisty you said that. Hello, JB the French. Orc for many orcs. Does anyone else have any opinions on how to beat human as orc other than just trying to not die at the start? It's basically like I say, you just don't die. If you don't die to the rush and you don't look too much, you have a chance, but that doesn't mean you win. The human loses nothing by rushing you. Even if, unless they lose both their heroes or something major like that, then they are still in the game by a long shot. They, they can have towers get destroyed, they can build, all those peasants could get killed, they could lose all their footmen. But if they keep their heroes and they've slowed down your tech and possibly killed your burrows, they've done enough. Trolling City, I will give you one chance to take that back, and if you don't, you will be banned from this Twitch channel. 
So you've been warned, and I'm going to give you probably about 20 seconds or so to catch up with the stream. Because I do not take lightly to that sort of thing. Here goes the next game, Human vs Orc. Never seen this before. I haven't seen Trollin City type anything since, so there's a good chance he's gonna get banned in a moment. What are the chat room's saying. Let's have a look. Make sure that the old player's doing the right thing. Alter Borrow, that's a good start. Yeah, Chatters, I think you're right. Watching replays basically orc versus human only and pretty much study it to like the nth degree exactly where the human will be at exactly every single moment in the game then you might stand more of a chance but you know it's coming that's the problem you know this is this is coming it's not a surprise it's not a surprise attack you're not losing because oh he caught me off guard you know it's coming but you still find it really hard to beat this is like a custom game in a sense isn't it survive like people are saying, survive the tier 2 push. That's the aim of the custom game. Like, if this was a custom game, if you survive it, then you win. That's default. But unfortunately, in a 1 versus 1 proper game, you actually have to continue playing and still win. Alright, yep. Trollin, you've had your chance. You've not said a thing. Why is his message deleted? Did someone else delete that or did he delete himself? How do you delete your message? Just make shamans. That's all you have to do, says a uh, financium Sims SC. Can't you players just have normal freaking names like Harry and Bob and Jim? Play Master of Truth is out, and he's already getting busy. He's getting jiggy with it. No, wait. Yep. He's going to pull back the ogre. This is what you do. That way the grunt can reach the ogre before he gets ensnared, or he won't get ensnared at all. So that's very good. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. I think I've seen that in a replay before. But I forget these things, unless I'm relentlessly studying it. But as you know, I'm a little bit busy with all the YouTube stuff that I'm consistently doing. So I don't... Oh, down goes the water mental. I guess he let that go because he doesn't want the Blade Master taking it anyway. And that's really harsh. Although Albert did manage to get out. I'm surprised that... I suppose GB... I'm going to call him GB even though it's G13. G13 I suppose. He knows it's not even worth going for the footman. Just get the experience. Move on. That's it. Move along. Get your experience. Move along. He's going to tech up in a moment as well. Two grunts. Tech. Get that going as fast as possible. So two grunts. Albert hasn't even teched yet. He's slacking here. We normally would have seen a tech. So this is a bit slack. There we go. A little bit late. This time the Orcs managed to do it first. Where, what items have we got for our Blade Master? He's just going to keep an eye on that Footman, but he's not concerned with killing the Footman. A lot of players, even myself, would probably be distracted enough to chase him, but he's wasting your time. The idea is to power up this Blade Master. Get him strong. Don't get distracted by a Footman, because if that Footman runs away, he might get killed by the Blade Master, but he could waste 20 or 30 seconds of the time of the Blade Master. But this way, the Blade Master is able to do more damage to the Footman just doing that. Speed of scroll guarantees a kill as well. Oh, almost guaranteed a kill. Nope, he got it. Just got it a bit fluky there. But that's nice. Kajin the Blade Master is back. He's going to be in every single game. But I don't see any bats. In, unless you don't understand the uh, in-joke, as it were, with Kajin. You might want to look up Kajin the Blade Master. And his amazing invisible bats on my YouTube channel. Witty Warcraft. You all know what I'm talking about. This is something that players used to do, but I suppose they want to hit tier 2 so they can get some more crits in. They also buy a clause of attack quite likely, or an item, if they can from the marketplace. Is he going to go for the troll trap as well? I guess he was trying to push his... Oh, he's managed to walk out as well. He didn't have to win walk. That's good. Now we know we can do that. We're going to see a similar pattern from Albert here. He's going to be going for his level 3. Not sure if he's going to get it. He's got two claws of attack. That's pretty good, actually, especially for a push if the Archmage is able to um, stick in it. Now, the Blade Master doesn't particularly want the Potion of Greater Mana, but that could be very powerful for a Witch... Well, I say Witch Doctor, I mean Witch... Uh, shaman. 
Not a shaman either. What the fuck is his name? Shadow Hunter, that's the one I want. Okay, tier two can't be too far away for our orc friend. He's got two grunts and a third one producing. Most of his money has been spent on items such as the claws of attack and boots of speed, I think. Unless he got the claws of attack from here, I'm not entirely certain, but I'm gonna assume he bought them. There we go, gloves of haste. Really good items at the moment for this blade master. Circle of nobility, claws of attack, and gloves of haste is a very nice mix. Archmage is level three. He's gonna possibly pick. He probably wants to pick up boost of speed, but can't right now. Might wait for it. Tier two can't be far away. Like I say, here it is. Tier two for orc. So we've got 750 gold, 600 wood. He's gonna want to start building that spirit lodge ASAP. Took away all of these trees, which is interesting. So that's to be done. The bestiary is on the outside though. Albert's getting ready with the arcane vault, so he does this. His archmage is in a lot of trouble here though. He's got ganked. So he's behind here already, because that archmage on 184 health is not going to be able to comfortably tier 2 push anyone. So keeping an eye on the archmage. Oh wow, that's huge. That's huge. He's even gone for a fire lord this time. Basically losing the archmage has really screwed over his rush, because that means no water elementals. And now the Fire Lord could be one of the worst heroes to pick up because he gets really punished by the Blade Master if the Blade Master is able to keep on him. This is very nice. I must say this is very well played by G13, but I have to say that he also has been a little bit fortunate with Albert slacking a little bit here. But still, you can't deny the fact that he's done a very good job so far, exactly what he should be doing. But I wonder how it would play out if Albert didn't make any mistakes. That Fire Lord is pretty much fucked. The damage is done because he's had to buy 150 gold on the potion as well. Like I say, it's not an efficient way to heal your hero. Here come the peasants, but they're actually walking over instead of militiaing over. So he's basically panicking now, Albert. He's making mistakes left, right and centre. The towers are good. Maybe that's why he's actually doing this. He's not militiaing them over so he can help repair them quicker. Because if you militia, you've got to wait a while before you can help repair them. No, look at that Fire Lord. That's what I'm talking about. He's very easy for a Blade Master to pick off, generally speaking. Unless he can be well defended with Sorks and Priests. But until that happens, he's kind of vulnerable. Footmen are in a lot of trouble. These Lava Spawns oh, aren't able to spawn anymore and split. So that's a bit unfortunate. One's going to go down in a moment. Footmen are having to back off. This does look like a lot of wasted resources for Albert. Have we even got tier 2? There we go, he's now starting to put in the arcane sanctums. And it's obviously a little bit late, so this is a very good start for our orc friend. He's got himself a bestiary, so that means us raiders. And we're going to see, there we are, first spirit walk is out. Then you get yourself the spirit walk adept training. So that means that your spirit walker is going to be able to use disenchant. Yeah, there you go. Where'd that blade master go? He's still over here. So Archmage is finally out. Because he was a level 3 hero, it takes ages, ages for him to come out. So there you go, that's pretty funny. It does look like a peasant seems to be after something here, but I'm not sure what it is. Just scouting, maybe? He's going to scout kind of successfully in a moment. A player's forces are under attack. Albert should have checked himself before he sh shrecked himself. What you need there is one of those emoticons with the Shrek icon, if they have one of those. That's what you need. It does look like this is basically what you need to do. Is, uh, you know, survive this push and G13's done more than that. He's basically completely and utterly punished Albert. Water elementals can be picked off by a Blade Master, so that's one good thing, is you can do good damage and they give experience. I mean, that's a level 3... I wonder how high it... oh wow. Yeah, I think I think it's higher than a level 3 unit. I'm not entirely sure actually. I'll have to look it up in the world editor. But like all things, even water elementals, they all give experience and they've all got certain levels attached. So a footman might be like level 2 for example. So if you kill that you're going to get 40 experience for example because that's how much a level 2 unit would give. I'm not sure on the exact numbers but you get the idea. Uh, yeah this is a really bad spot to be is having a fire lord. He's virtually a useless hero. He's really good if the rush was still happening and he's putting pressure on but if the rush has died off and he's left on his own in a situation like this he's virtually useless I've just got to honestly say he's one of the worst heroes by a long shot he's really strong in a push that's going well but if the push isn't happening or isn't going well he's virtually useless Blade Master just keeps popping back 
I assume he's going to get himself clarity pots or healing salves. This is nice creep in here as well, just finishing off this creep camp. More experience, not a level 3 for the Shadow Hunter just yet, but let's have a look. Albert's got 3 and a 1, so by no means is G13 behind. He's 4 and a 2. Arcane Vault going down there, so there is another 1 in Albert's space, so he's still able to get access to spell breakers should he wish to purchase them. Now he's gone to the point where he's got casters, so maybe he still stands a chance, because, like I say, if you do manage to survive and beat the human tier 2 push, the game isn't over. you still got to deal with casters, and they are a pain in the butt. He's not doing himself any favours, though, with that lightning shield. Got more... Just creeping here. Both the heroes are out and about. Oh no, that's a, an illusion. The other hero is actually over here, the real one. Just creeping. Blade Master just looking for units to pick off, because he can do that. We have got Soul Burn here, though, so maybe the Fire Lord isn't completely useless, but... Blade Master is still able to comfortably um, wind walk when needed. He's just getting a little bit screwed over here, so that's well handled. You can see just how powerful Slow is. He actually might be forced here to use his invulnerability part. It does look like he will be. Yep. So he's had to use his invulnerability part, and I think a potion as well. I'm not entirely sure. That's how powerful Slow is. So powerful. So, so good. He managed to basically not lose anything there, Albert. So that's a huge buff for Albert. He's still sitting at 51 food, so despite all of this going wrong for him, he's at the same food cap at the moment as G13. Now, he's going to keep pushing his food luck, I think. He's not, like, storing cash or anything like that. He's just going all out for it. Okay, let's have a look. So we got Clarity Pot, Healing Salve, Scroll of Speed, Wand of Illusion for the Shadow Hunter. Blade Master is sitting with Boost of Speed, Circle of Nobility, Claws of Attack plus 6, Scroll of Healing, and Gloves of Haste. Oh yes, two Gloves of Haste, why not? It's going to be nice for those crits. We're going to see Albert with three Claws of Attack, like I was saying earlier. That's really powerful when you push him. Not so powerful when you're on the behind, but still, if he's able to just sit there with that Archmage, slowly doing damage over time. Gloves of Haste would be really good for the Archmage as well. Periapt of Vitality. He's going to keep the Archmage alive a little bit longer. This freaking formation thing irritates the hell out of me. Uh, Pendant of Energy. Interesting. Can be very powerful. Not terrible if the Fire Lord's able to stay alive. More Lava Spawns. Brilliant Sora. Fills up that uh, mana bar all that much more. It gets an extra 150 mana, so that's a pretty big deal. Now, this is good for G13. He's in a position where he's going to push. He's actually got six peons as well. They're going to basically join the Orc army. Now, the idea of doing this is that you use the Spirit Walker's ability, the first ability, which is Spirit Link. That distributes the damage that is taken amongst units. As you can see, these four units are now going to distribute damage. So this Grunt gets hit for 100 damage. The rest of these other three units will get hit for like 25, and that Grunt will get hit for 25. I don't know the exact numbers, but basically that Grunt will take reduced damage, and it will be split amongst the other units. Now this is what you do. The Peons are going to chuck down some Towers as well, and I suppose when they're ready to join the fight, they can also be um, Spirit Linked as well. That means that these Peons, they don't get focused. When you attack moving, the Peons are the lowest priority targets, so Spirit Link is really good. It's just basically like adding extra health to your other units that have Spirit Link with the Peons. Disenchant does remove your Spirit Link, so bear that in mind. So what you want to do is you want to use, in an ideal world, is you want to use Disenchant when needed to dispel summons and then re-Spirit Link above. Now the Blade Master is in a very comfortable spot, he's got healing, so he's able to keep going. Shadow Hunter's just staying at the back, able to consistently heal. Blade Master just needs to sit there doing the damage that he lovely well does. Raiders are going to town, we've got a lot of Militia here. This is all of the wood peons at the moment. Doesn't matter too much for Albert. He's got 1300 wood. He's still got a lot of casters over here. Priests are taking a lot of damage, but at the same time, they're still quite comfortable. Casters pulled him back a little bit. Towers are now up, so this is huge for G13. If he didn't have those towers, this might be slightly different, because Albert's still looking fairly strong. But with those towers up, it's a big deal. And human don't actually have access to um, siege units, unless they get themselves a workshop, which is very unusual in 1 versus 1, except when a human's first is Night Elf or something like that. So you can see more towers are going to be being pushed, because uh, this is what you can do. If you're getting too much wood, which will typically happen as an Orc player, once you've hit Tier 2, oh, look at that Fire Lord. He's going down so quickly. The Blade Master just does so much damage. This is why... I say that you still go Blade Master, even though he gets countered by Slow, he's still particularly powerful when it comes to fighting versus anyone, because he just does so much damage. Without the Blade Master, you've got a real reduction in your sort of source of damage.
The Orc heroes and units are being a little bit punished here, but there's still those towers, so as long as he can just keep cutting, Slow's doing a good job, but then again, Scroll of Speed helps to counter the Slow just ever so slightly. He wants to pull back those units if he can do, maybe put a healing south when possible, keep them back. The Archmage is being focused here, but the Casters are still going strong. Albert has actually managed to pick himself up a Berserker, which is basically the closest thing he has to a, like a Siege unit right now versus these towers. You can see the Berserker can do quite a lot of damage, but the Blade Master does typically go for it. He does use invisibility just to keep the Berserker alive, but it's going to come back in anyway. So just got to be careful. The Blade Master is probably looking for that Berserker. He will be able to pick him off if he goes for it, but will he want to? Because he's low on his mana, so he can only win walk so many times. Kodo is coming in here. Towers are really pushing strong. More towers going up, much, much closer to the keep. So whilst Albert's still got a relatively good army, 39 food versus 35 food, this is a lot of towers. Now, casters do magic damage. Towers have heavy armor. They take extra damage from casters. So if Albert's able to get himself into a position where he can just comfortably do like follied attacks on the watchtowers without taking too much punishment, he's okay, but it's not too easy. Now Albert's best bet here is just to keep that Blade Master under check. Keep him as low health as possible. The higher health the Blade Master is, the easier it is for him to basically um, go wild. If he keeps low health though, he'll just be spending most of his time running back and forth, not actually doing that much productive things. That's a lot of towers. That is a lot of towers. I don't often see this. This is nice to see the tables turned. Yeah, the peasant's really done quite a lot of damage, actually, surprisingly enough. He's considering going for the Archmage consistently here, and he does seem to be paying off. He's kind of ignoring the units, and whenever he can get hits on the Archmage, he's going for it. If the Archmage hits level 5, though, and doesn't lose to these towers, although these towers are getting stronger and stronger, if he can just hit level 5, one pay at peasant, you're going to see level 3 water elementals. That now this is so many towers, so I'm not really sure whether Albert can still beat this, but level 3 water elementals would go a long way to helping versus those towers. These towers do obviously do do huge damage versus Sorks and any other casters because they have unarmored armor. Which is ir ironic, isn't it? You're unarmored, you've got unarmored armor. That's a oxygen, isn't it? Not an oxygen, that's funny. Oxymoron. There we go, that's the word. There we go, he's going for his level 3 water elemental. But I don't know if it's really going to be enough versus all that many towers. Especially if G13 is able to devour the water elemental, which I kind of get the feeling that's what he wants to do right now. But he doesn't. If he gets an ensnare on the water elemental, he can get a guaranteed devour, but he's still focusing heavily on that Archmage, despite Albert's efforts in keeping the Archmage alive. The Archmage doesn't really die as long as Albert's got a good check on him. But he does keep the Archmage low health. So that means it's less comfortable for the Archmage to be out and about. Now Albert's in a position where he's got zero income, so he pretty much needs to push now, otherwise every time, every second that ticks by, is Albert not getting gold whilst his opponent is. And that means more resources, more units for G13, and less for Albert, and also G13 is now really starting to build up on his mana, his health, and he's got himself Orb of Lightning as well, which is huge. He's just double checking if there's an expansion here, just to see if Albert still has a chance. If not, he doesn't have to do anything. He can just sit here and wait for Albert to come, and that's what you should do. Fire Lord is back. Water Elementals are now stepping in, but the casters are hanging back. They can take a hell of a lot of hits, those Water Elementals, but they still can't take that much from those many towers. That's a lot of towers. That's four, eight towers there, potentially. The ones at the back might not necessarily hit. Water Elementals going to go down. No, he's just going to go down to towers. Priests are being picked up. Yeah, it doesn't look like GG for Albert, to be honest. There's Stony G13. It's going to have a hard time doing anything because that's what slow does it makes it so that your units are even more clunky as though the units orc units particularly weren't clunky enough as it was when they're slowed they're like mega clunky you can see that albert's not got towers himself he's just attacking with units and most of them are casters but there's still enough to sort of damage that blade master and slow him down albert's just not getting gold though here so the longer g13 can keep him preoccupied yeah, I think Albert just can't come back now. He's still got a relatively decent army, but this is too much, and he's not going to be able to repair this in time. Pretty sure Albert wants, wishes he had more mana right now. Going for the towers, whilst the towers are preoccupied on the keep. Blade Master's stepping forth. He's going to get slowed immediately. Very slow and fast. His attack is still fast, but, you know... It's not that fast. It's like the slowest of the fast that you can have. Oh, here we go. Disenchant means he's going to attack even faster. And snares are a really good way to counter invisibility because you can still see invisible units.
but you have to ensnare them first. But then again, as soon as ensnare runs off, which is very quickly on the heroes, uh, they do stay invisible and you can no longer see them. So, Fire Lord is probably going to go down this time unless he gets a crit. No, he doesn't. Oh, that ensnare! Oh, it's still there. Lovely. Brilliant. Down goes the Fire Lord. Albert's down to one hero and doesn't throw down a GG. Well done, G13. You've proven that Orcs can do it. Things did go well for you there, but you did nothing but exactly the right thing at all moments. So well done. Well done indeed. Particularly since you seem to be an undead player as well. So I don't know what that's all about. Alright, well there we go. I think we've all learnt a lesson today. I think this could be its own video for YouTube to be quite frank. The whole how do you beat uh, tier 2 power push as human. It could be called that as well. Power push. Power tower push. Because typically there's towers, if not then there's lots and lots of casters. So well done to all players involved, good job for everyone giving it a go. And G13 managed to find a way to break the human scum tier 2 push. Well done. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like and comment. I'll see you later.